Oh man, this starts getting pretty deep, doesn't it? Whoo, look at that. That's really deep. This is cool though. This is about the deepest water that I've run across so far. Alright, let's go check this thing out. It looks like there's some kind of a structure or something down here too. Stranger's Starship. What's this red thing? Whoa! Oh, is that a... That's an air thing! Oh, cool! Look at that! We can come in here and get air. Alright guys, uh, we are back, and I'm about ready to make my first hundred million. <clears throat> so, uh, let's take a look at this first before we do that Gift of the Abyss. This is a C-Class, and we're not interested. Alright, let's head on back here. And, uh, no, no nanites. Alright, here we go. Our first 100 million. This is a red letter day, man. Nice little milestone to reach. So, uh, sell items from your inventories. We're gonna sell all of our wiring looms. And that's going to get us up to 102.1 million units. Woot! All right. Awesome. So, uh, I don't know how many trips I've made since um, the last uh, the last time I had you, uh, had you guys on the video. But um, if we go to our cargo slots, when I first... When I first started this, I think I had two or maybe three. And so I've done two per trip. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, probably eleven or twelve trips I think I've made from our starting point of twenty twenty some odd million all all the way up to 102 million. Plus remember I've been spending money on uh the slots too. So yeah. Really cool. I'm gonna I'm gonna keep going though. And uh, even bump this up further because it's just going to exponentially increase each time I do this. And what I would like to probably do uh, is probably go all the way up to maybe a billion with this. Because once we have a billion credits, we're pretty much set for money for a long time. <clears throat> and won't really need to worry about it. And we'll have enough money to pretty much buy anything that we come across. You know, S-Class ships, S-Class freighters, S-Class mobile tools, and all the cool stuff. So I'm going to keep working on this off camera. And I don't know if I'll if I'll get it all the way to a billion before I bring you guys back. Um, one thing that would would uh, cause me to bring you guys back sooner is if we you know come across a really nice S class ship, whether that be a freighter or a starship, or even a multi tool. But I'm just gonna keep pounding away at this off camera. And if I don't run into anything really super cool between now and then, I'm probably gonna try and get this up to a billion or very close to a billion before we uh, continue uh, the series here, okay? So anyway, I uh, just want to show that to you guys, and I will see you back here when I see you back here. Bye. All right, guys, I am back, and I have a lot of things to update you on. It's been uh, actually a two or three days, real-life days, since I recorded the first part of this episode, and a lot of things have happened. Now, uh, it was my intention to capture some of the things these things that have happened. In fact, I did capture, well, I sort of kind of captured uh, some of the changes in new things that have happened along the way, but I had some technical problems with my OBS, and lo make a long story short, I basically lost those recordings. So what I'm going to have to do is just get you caught up uh, to where I am right now. So I apologize, but it is what it is. So let's see, what's the first thing I need to get you caught up on? Um, let's start with our inventory and our money. So we are now... Uh, we have all of our bag slots upgraded. We have all of our cargo slots maxed out and we're almost done with our technology. So we basically have six more s slots, which means three more jumps to three new systems to get that upgraded. We are currently sitting at 476 million uh, units. So we're almost to halfway to our goal of hitting a billion units. And I'm going to continue after uh, we after we do a little sidestep here, I'm going to continue uh, working on that and getting it up to 1 billion and once the plan is once I get that up to 1 billion Then we're going to stop worrying about making money and we're going to do the quest enjoy the game Find a place to build a base and work on uh, some of the other cool things like the farming and uh, We'll set up some auto mines with things in with some indium and all that kind of thing 
and just enjoy the game without having to worry about money. <clears throat> but I'm going to keep uh, I'm going to keep farming or rather flipping wiring looms until I hit a billion. And again, most of that, I'm, of course, I'm going to continue to do off camera. All right, so that takes care of our inventory and our money. I also have come across a uh, a ship. In fact, I have two. Uh, S-Class ships. This is the one I'm currently using. This is a 31 slot hauler and I've got uh, all the upgrades I want on it at the moment anyways. And this is what I've been using for uh, you know doing my runs. It's a really nice uh, S-Class ship and um, yeah so we found that uh, we found that in a station when we were uh, flipping wiring limbs and that's that's what she looks like right there. I also have another S-Class Explorer ship that is parked, I think, over here. Let's take a quick look. Wait, where's she at? Oh, you know what? I just realized something. I'm not actually on my freighter. I'm on a different freighter. Um, so I'll have to show that to you later. Uh, speaking of which, we do have a new freighter as well. And we now, whoops, we now have a an A-class um, freighter with, I can't remember how many slots I have in it now that many slots <laughs> and uh, it's a really nice uh, very huge just ginormous uh, black freighter it's kind of more like a, a vertical type freighter rather than one of the flat ones uh, so we picked that up uh, again doing one of the space battles I haven't done anything with it in terms of building a base on it or not and at this point we're simply just using it as a place to dock save and to store extra stuff so nothing's happened with this freighter yet and uh, you know when we do start doing stuff on it or if we get an, an, another better freighter uh, we'll, we'll definitely, you know, record a lot of that on the video. Okay, so we have a new freighter. Um, let's see what else. I also have a 24 slot Class S uh, multi-tool that we found in a neighboring system. Very, very cool. So I just, you know, I, I was just jumping from system to system and kept checking all of the, uh, you know, all of the multi-tools. And interestingly, interestingly enough, when we jumped into that system, um, the person, it was already discovered by another player. And the other player who discovered it actually named this system um, right here. So it's this system. He basically named the system so it tells you that there's an S-Class multi-tool in the space station, which is really, really pretty cool. And sure enough, that's the one that we got. So it's a 24 slaughter. I'm in the process of trying to get it upgraded, but I haven't... Um, haven't gotten really far on it yet, but this is what we have so far. Uh, I need to find a minor settlement so we can get the sodium diodes and the salt refractors to get the optical drill back installed. But that's currently what I have set up on the S-Class tool, so really cool. Okay, I think um, I think that's it for everything that we, you know, have obtained or acquired. There is another thing that happened that, uh, you know, was rather disappointing that I didn't get on camera. Uh, or rather I did, but the, the video was all messed up on it. And um, that is actually in a different system. And I found an Atlas interface. And what I'm going to do is I'm, ac I'm actually going to take you back to that interface and kind of walk through what I did. Um, and again, it's just it's really unfortunate that I didn't get that on camera because I thought I was recording it kind of thing, but I wasn't. But what we want to do is... So we are in this um, this system here, and the Atlas interface is, or at least was in that system. I don't know if it's still going to be there or not. Hyperdrive has no fuel. Oh, really? Hmm. Okay. So so yeah, there there was an Atlas interface in this system that we need to that I want to show you. Uh, but um, this is the main thing that I want to do is that we have uh, when I flew into this system, I got a. Um, a message that just popped up on the screen for this quest called uh, something about you know uh, memories of the deep I think it's called and one of the things that happened as I decided to take a look at that is that uh, the quest gave me a uh, an s-class underwater breathing module so I decided to go ahead and install the aeration membrane in that module and do this quest and take a little break from the you know the wire loom flip flipping that we're doing and uh, you know, and do this quest. Uh, you know, just take a little bit of sidestep. So that's that's the main goal for um, either the end of this episode or at least uh, the start of the next episode, just depending upon how the rest of our time goes. There it goes. Okay. So yeah, this is our this is our freighter here. Really ginormous 
Like I said, it's kind of more vertically oriented than flat oriented like a lot of the other ones are. Uh, but just love it. Really cool. Um, so let's hop on in here and make ourselves some more warp fuel. And then we'll we'll go take a quick look at that Atlas interface and I'll just kind of walk you through what happened with that. And then uh, we'll start this, this uh, Mysteries of the Deep Quest. Okay, there's my other Class S Explorer ship. Let's take a quick look at that too. Um, this is not a ship I normally would have bought for the looks of it. Uh, I kind of don't like it simply for, because of the fact that it's not symmetrical. I would have preferred, you know, the little pod thing to be on both sides, but you know, it is what it is. But it's an S-Class ship and it has even more slots than our, our current S-Class ship. And it's got a really cool looking uh, interior here too. But uh, basically it's got, yeah, it's got a lot of slots. And so I'm going to... You know, when we're when I'm done flipping wiring looms, I'm probably going to switch from that ship to this one because this one has more slots, and work on getting it upgraded. I just didn't want to take the time to try and upgrade this while I'm still in the process of flipping looms and working my way to one billion. So we're going to stick with that other ship uh, for now until uh, you know we hit the billion, and then if I haven't found it, anything better by that time, uh, then we're going to switch over to this ship. But there she is. Okay, so we need to make ourselves some uh, warp fuel for our hyperdrive and then we'll go back here and we'll load this up perfect okay so our ship is recharged with warp fuel uh, all right let's go ahead now and hop out to do a save climb back in here and let's head over back over to the other system i want to show you the atlas interface and kind of what happened there okay and there it is so this is an Atlas interface. This is the system too, that, as you can see from the title there, that has the uh, multi-tool. And so what we did is we came here and we, we uh, docked in the Atlas interface. And I'll kind of just retrace my steps for you. This thing is a lot, it, it, it's kind of more ominous, you know, red and black, and it's just like, what the hell is going on here? Type of feel to it. I do remember docking on something similar to this in the original game but I don't remember a whole lot about it because I only played the original game for about 30 some odd hours so what happens is we docked in here and we climbed on out and um whoa okay and so basically you you kind of walk around and there's these things that you can come across in I learned a word from one of them, and then the rest of them didn't seem to do anything. So I checked them all out. But, um, and look at this too. <laughs> That's like really cool. It goes way down there. It looks way, way more awesome in VR, of course. Okay, so now I got two words from those. I only got one word the last time. I'm not sure what that's supposed to do. But anyway, what you do is you walk up to this thingy here. And the first thing that's cool is what? Look at this. You can. Uh, oh, it's not gonna let me do it. Okay, so these two little globe things will give you warp warp fuel, but apparently I can't do it again. Uh, but then I walked up to this thing and I activated it, uh, and it's not gonna let me do that again. So I activated it. That little ball thing popped up, and then basically, um, the the Atlas interface, whatever doohickey, talked to me and said he wanted me to follow his path. I guess he, he thinks he's like some kind of a, or it thinks it's some kind of deity. Um, and if it said, basically, if I follow its path, then I will be enlightened and blah, 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 this and that and, what, and the other. So it gave me an option to do that or not to do that. And I decided, what the hell, let's go ahead and do it. Because, you know, the one thing about No Man's Sky that I have purposefully avoided, you know, is the storyline. I don't want to spoil the storyline. I want to experience that organically. Now, I do sometimes watch how-to videos that are focused on, you know, the best way to set up your slots in your multi-tool or, you know, good ways to make money, stuff like that. Because I don't, you know, I don't mind looking that stuff up ahead of time. That way, it, you know, it saves, saves time when you're actually playing the game. But if it had anything that has to do with spoilers, you know, with the story, that I definitely avoid. So I have no idea, really, to speak of, you know, how the story in this game goes because I want to, like I said, experience that organically. And so I decided to go ahead and, and follow this Atlas path. I have no idea what's going to happen what the consequences or the rewards are probably a little of both of that's going to be, but that's what we did. Okay, and that's pretty much it. And then I just, you know, kind of walked around and checked out these other little glowing dome things. Um, okay, that one doesn't do anything at all. 
And some of them... Yeah, so we learned two words, but I, th I think the rest of them will probably just not do anything, because that, that was my experience the first time around. Let's try this one. Oh, we did weren't we're alert. So uh, weren't alert. <laughs> weren't alert. Learn a word. Those like looked like they kind of didn't then disappeared. Okay, let's try this one over here. What does this do? Okay, that one didn't do anything. How about this one? That one doesn't do anything at all. So I wonder. I wonder if you're supposed to to do them in some kind of a pattern. Okay, good. We learned three words. Viking, Viking word for weapon. Actually, four words. Yeah, maybe we're supposed to do these in a pattern. I don't know. Okay, that one didn't do anything. And neither did that one. That one doesn't do anything either. Anyway, so yeah, that's the that's the Atlas interface, and that's kind of how everything went down. Again, yeah, it's kind of a bummer I didn't ca capture me doing it for the first time, but at least... You kind of now uh, see it in, you know, we retraced our steps. Okay, let's hop back in our ship. Hop back out for a save point. And then we're going to go back to that system and we're going to uh, follow this dreams of the deep quest and see what happens. So let's do this. Okay, we are back in uh, the other system here. And we're going to go ahead and do this stranger's starship thing. Let's see what happens. We did land on this planet the first time and it's a mostly an oceanic planet. The thing is though is if this ship is actually in the water oh, I'm having a little graphic glitch going on there. Oh, VR's freaking out. Let's just wait a second for it to chill out here. Okay, guys, I'm back. Um, apparently, I my disk was running low on space, and Windows decided that I needed to run the storage sense thing right in the middle of my game, and that's what crashed everything. Uh, you'd think that it would check for if there's a game or something going on before it did something like that, but apparently not. So, Anyway, we will uh, pick up on... At this point, and continue going down to the location. So yeah, this thing is down in the water, which doesn't surprise me. But we can't land our ship in the water, so we're going to have to put it down on one of these like nearby islands, I guess. So I guess this one right over here. How convenient, eh? It's, it's funny, too, because it kind of looks like a, a paw or something from up above. I think I need to do a recenter, too. So let's go. Options, recenter view. That yeah, was pretty close. Yeah, this is weird. Look at the... <laughs> what in the world? Jupani system. It looks like a, like a big claw or paw or something. Okay, well... So here's the thing. We have um, we have the aeration membrane now. So let's look at that again real quick. So uh, this was given to me when I started this quest, and then and then I went and I had already bought this, so I installed this and got it. So this gives us breathing efficiency, and then this is supposed to make it even that much better. So hopefully we can get over there and do what we need to do. Uh, oh wow, the horizon's really weird. Uh, to see what this quest is all about. All right, let's do this. So I use my right hand to choose the direction that we're gonna, that we go in. Yeah, that definitely allows us to breathe for quite some time, doesn't it? I wonder what I need to recharge the the thing. No, we need to go here. Here. Okay. Right 
charged equipment with oxygen, oxygen capsule, or life support gel. Okay. Do I have any oxygen? I do. Of course, charging with oxygen makes sense. Any of you guys hostile? Hopefully not. I need... Oh, those guys are mean, though. I have to be careful of them because they will sting us, I believe. Or at least uh, most of the other ones I've run into like that will do so. Okay, let's move. continue moving along here. I'm curious to see what this ship is, man. If this is like an S-Class ship, we'd have to repair it and everything, but... Could be neat. There's more of those squid doohickeys. I don't think we need to do this, because our other thing will keep us in the air until we start to run out. And even then... Oh, man, this starts getting pretty deep, doesn't it? Whew, look at that. That's really deep. This is cool, though. This is about the deepest water that I've run across so far. How much oxygen do I have in my inventory? I don't have any, but I do have it in the ship. And I have the tr teleporter thing, so that's probably why it's letting me recharge this. Okay. Wow, look how deep this is. Alright, let's go check this thing out. It looks like there's some kind of a structure or something down here, too. Stranger's Starship. Life support's low. Let's deal with that. Yeah, that little teleporter module from the ship is super useful. What do you need to be fixed? Nothing. We just got nanites from it. Look at that. Damage container. No, I don't want. I don't want that stuff. I want. I want you. Come on, lock onto it. There we go. What do we get? Ion battery. Okay. All right. So here's the ship. That's an interesting looking ship. What's this red thing? Whoa. Oh, is that it? That's an air thing. Oh, cool! Look at that! We can come in here and get air. Nifty! Okay. So even people that didn't have the membrane could potentially do this quest. There's a, one of the clamps there. Oh, stay away from me, you guys. <laughs> I don't know if those things will actually attack you, but I know if you do get close to them, uh, they'll put the heart on you. Okay, um, now our oxygen's going down, so let's redo our thing here. Uh-oh. Uh, I guess we we must be out of oxygen. Okay, well, fortunately, we have this. This is my very first time, you guys. Very first time doing anything in the water in No Man's Sky, so I'm kind of new to how everything works. It's a good thing this air thing was here, though. Because it does seem to run out fast. Okay, let's check this out. Distress beacon. No? Well... Ah, oh, shoot. Okay, so it's a Class B ship. Uh, which pretty much means we're not going to do this at all. I mean, there's just no reason to. Well, let's, let's look at what the beacon says anyway. Log 03A breach event plus four souls. Most of the crew are dead. Only those of us who already suited up when the asteroid hit survived the initial decompression. We were lucky that smaller starships were able to get cleared before the hull imploded. None of our ships have hyperdrive capability. We should be able to retrieve the blueprints from the freighter's main data bank, though it appears to have crashed in the deep ocean. Thankfully, we still have the plans for the Nautilin. Download Nautilin plans. Oh, guys. Nautilin chamber. Submarine docking bay. Very cool. Okay, so this is the, the beginning, I think, of our underwater, our underwater adventures. Okay. Yep. Nice. So we're getting a bunch of stuff there. Very cool. Okay. So let's see. If we go into here and we go... No, not into there. If we go into here. We go to catalog and equipment. So what did we... 
We just learned Nautilus stuff. Message module. Trying to see where it's at. Oh. Construction parts. That's what we want, isn't it? Those are the freighter items. Oh, there goes the timer. Um. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know where that stuff is now. Viewing sphere. Yeah, this is all just the normal base stuff. Okay. Well, um, I, I mean, some things flashed up on the screen. Oh, maybe they're construction technologies. Here we go. Okay. So, Nautilus Chamber, an advanced fully airlock docking station for the Nautilus submarine. We learned that. We learned the marine shelter, an emergency survival module, can be rapidly deployed on the seabed in the event of an oxygen or other exosuit life support emergency. That's probably what we're in right now, inside of. Provides similar shelter from environmental hazards, predators, and other hostile forces found in the deep ocean. Wow, that's cool. Okay. So so we get we get a little bit of subnautica action going on here in uh, No Man's Sky. So I think those were the only two things that we learned. So what do we need to actually make this thing? We can pin it. We need living pearls and glass and oxygen. Anything else? Whoops. It's not let me scroll down any further than that. Marine shelter. Harvest living pearl, craft glass, gather oxygen. Can be rapidly deployed in the seabed. Okay, cool. Yeah, so uh, that's probably exactly what we're sitting in right now because it looks pretty much like the same thing, even though it looks a little bit different from the outside. Cool. All right, guys. Well, I don't know uh, if if the quest goes any further than that. It looks like it does. Maybe want us to make that. This ship definitely is not worth, uh, you know, trying to fix. So we're gonna leave that where it is. But cool. I want to say this red thing around here is a graphical glitch, because that doesn't seem right, like it's supposed to be there. I don't know. I don't know. Um, what I might end up doing, though, is, since we're here, right, and we have this to replenish our air, what I might end up doing is seeing if I can actually get all of this stuff to make one of these. Because there we have uh, some a bunch of clams in the area. Armor clams, yeah. So, yeah, maybe we'll do that. But anyway, we're out of time in this episode. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and end the episode here. What I think I'll do, uh, since we're down here, is see if we can actually build one of these. And maybe the, the Nautilin uh, docking thing, we have to build that. And then from there, we can build the actual submarine. I'm not really ready to do water stuff yet. It is certainly on my list of things that I want to do in this playthrough. Um, but, wow, look at the underwater cave right there. But, um, you know, it's not really something that I want to do. I, what I want to really do is get back to, you know, flipping the wiring rooms to get up to our billion, and then that way we can, we don't have to worry about money, and we can continue enjoying this game. So, yeah, I think that's probably what I'm going to do. So I'm probably just going to swim back to the surface and continue uh, flipping the looms and keep working towards the billion, and then uh, I will bring you guys back again for... Um, updates along the way uh, and or just you know hammer it all out and get there before we continue the episode it just kind of depends upon you know what happens but i guess that's it for now guys i hope you enjoyed the episode if you did hit that like button and subscribe to the channel consider sharing out the video on your social media and leaving a comment those things do help the channel greatly and i greatly appreciate it all right guys we will see you down the road hopefully we'll be even richer than we already are now goodbye <laughs>